kids, welcome to Relationship Goals. Now, you might be thinking, sometimes you hear grown-ups talking about relationship goals as wanting to get married someday, but we're gonna talk about all relationships because we wanna have amazing relationships with our friends, with our brothers and sisters, with our teachers, with our parents, with everybody, right? Great relationships make life so wonderful, and it starts by having an awesome, awesome relationship with God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So we're gonna be talking about that too, so that you can get closer to God, and it helps all of your relationships. Now, for this first week, we're gonna talk about feelings, feelings. How many of you guys love feelings? Oh. Hmm, I guess it depends on what kind they are, huh? Okay, let's try this. How many of you guys love feeling happy? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, did anybody say no to that one? <laughs> why, why, right? Okay, happy, we love that one. How many of you guys feel like you love being sad? Oh, nobody, I don't blame you. Yeah, that feeling is a harder one to feel, right? How many of you guys like to feel excited? Yes, like Christmas morning, right? What do I got for presents? Run, see what's under the tree, excited. That feels pretty good. Do you guys all like that one? Yeah, that's fun. How about afraid? Hmm. I hate being afraid, don't you guys? That's like one of my worst, worst things when I feel afraid. So there's all these kind of feelings that we can have, right? Some of them are wonderful, like I feel peaceful, right? Or I feel worried or what have you. So we're gonna talk about feelings and how to understand them because feelings play a big part in all of our relationships. Sometimes like with, um, with friends, for instance, you ever have feelings like of feeling so happy because you have a great friend and you love doing great things together and they tell you how wonderful you are and all that and that feels amazing. But then sometimes there's also feelings that are harder and scarier, like being afraid that somebody doesn't care about you or if somebody starts stops talking to you and you get afraid you know, of being alone and that kind of thing. So we're gonna talk about how the feelings work, what God's word says, because God made all of our feelings. And feelings are a wonderful part of who we are. But sometimes if we kind of let them take control of our lives, they're not so good and not so fun. So anyway, let's take a look at the first uh, section in the Bible. Uh, God's word's got great things about how this works. Let's go to Proverbs 23. And in verse seven, if you've got Bibles, which would be amazing, I know it helps, takes a long time to kind of get used to where everything is. But Proverbs is a little bit like around the middle of your Bible. Uh, if you're going from the beginning, it's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, Chronicle, Ezra, Maya, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs. <sighs> Almost ran out of breath doing that. So uh, Proverbs 23, this is such a cool verse, I love this. It says in verse seven, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Wow, what does that mean? So we think of our heart as being here, right? What we feel and we think thinking, right? Is our brain kind of thing. So what this is saying is how we feed our thoughts feeds how we feel. How amazing is that? I got a little, Got a little chart to show you how it works together. Here we go. Here's your brain. Actually, that looks like the brain with the mustache or I don't know, maybe a little sad face or something. He's got little dots and what have you. That's not really what our brains look like. So anyway, but here's our brain and we have our thoughts and they feed down here to our heart, to our feelings. So one of the things that will help us is noticing what our thoughts are and how they feed our feelings and it affects relationships. If our thoughts are ones that are based on things that aren't true, then our feelings will have this reaction, but they're not based on believing the truth. I'll give you an example. Like for instance, some of the not so good feelings, because we don't usually mind being happy, right? We don't gotta worry about, oh, I gotta stop being happy. Yeah, <laughs> but it's things like our fears, right? Things like that. Like for instance, have you ever, when you were sleeping at night in bed, heard a noise and got scared? Yeah, I've done that, I've done that. Some people go, oh my God, when you're little, you're like, ah, 
is there anything under the bed? There's nothing under the bed. You've gone and looked under the bed. There's nothing under there. But the fear that you're feeling is based on things that aren't true. So if we interrupt our thoughts up here and just go, no, 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 there's nothing under the bed. I've looked under the bed many times and there's nothing there. My parents have looked under the bed and all of that. And if we interrupt that, then it doesn't result in feeding that fear. But if we keep feeding the thoughts that aren't true, the fear gets bigger and bigger. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, so this can help us in situations where we don't have to let our fear get so big. It's also the same in relationships. Have you ever been afraid that maybe somebody doesn't like you or care about you or afraid of what people think about you, right? And that feeds and feeds and feeds. When I was little, oh my gosh, I didn't have any friends and a part of it was because I kept feeding my brain all the time on fears of people not liking me. So this is a part of what we can do. In fact, the Bible speaks the best thing that we can do to replace those thoughts is by thinking God's word and what God says about us. So let's take a look at uh, 2 Corinthians 10 in verse five. It says, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Okay, so that means we might not be able to control our feelings as easily, but we can control what we focus our thoughts on. We get kind of thoughts all the time, but when you get thoughts that aren't true, what you can do one thought at a time, and it's not ever gonna look perfect, but we can try. Like when we see thoughts that we know are not true or things that are not according to God's word, we can take them captive. We go, here you go thought, ah, I'm gonna grab you and I'm gonna take you captive and make it obedient to Christ, the things that Christ teaches. So when we are not feeling good enough, because that hurts relationships sometimes, right? Not feeling good about ourselves and that kind of thing. You're thinking, nobody likes me, I'm ugly, I'm stupid. Any of those things, those are terrible thoughts that aren't true about what God says about you. But you can take captive the thought and go, no, I'm gonna believe what God says about me, that I'm loved, that I'm a child of God, that I'm God's masterpiece, and take it captive and believe what God's word says. Isn't that amazing? That's exciting, right? Can you see how some of these things will help your relationships with people? Yeah, we want to start working on that as far as noticing our thoughts and instead interrupting them to believe what God's word says. Anyway, um, let's just do a little meditation to close out about this. And we're going to be working on noticing our thoughts and how they feel, how they feed our feelings and how it can help us in growing in all the relationships, okay? So close your eyes, you guys, if you can. Get on your knees. I'm gonna do a little meditation about relationships, starting with your relationship with God, okay? So first, at the very beginning, just think about who God is, how big God is. God's like, oh, past the planets and the stars, that's how big God is, he's invisible. He made everything that is made and he loves you. Just take that in for a moment right now, that he loves you and is with you. Now, also, that Christ, that Christ loves you and is there for you. Just take that in. And I want you to ask the Lord right now, what it would look like for the relationships you have to be the best that they could be. Think about places you'd rather have better relationships with your friends, with your family, teachers. Just take a minute and ask the Lord to show you what that would look like. Amen. Okay, you guys, I'm so excited about what's to come. So your first stretch goal, because every week we're gonna have little stretch goals. Oh, stretch, stretch, right? And then we get stronger. So the first one is J, juicy prayer and meditation. We have meditations on the Searchlight app just for you kids. They're just five minutes long, and it's a time for you to grow in your relationship with God and with Christ. So your stretch goal this week is to press play and listen to the meditations each day. Okay? Love you guys. See you next week.
Thank you.